Tonight, brothers and sisters, it's my honor, it's my pleasure to introduce not just a queen in our community, not only a legend in our community, but a personal bona fide ride and die queen of mine, Sister Charmaine. She don't play. She don't play. I don't care what you don't say. And you know that I love this sister because how many times she's been on this platform? Maybe more than anyone else, I think. I don't even remember now. But I know that she's in the top 2% in my book. And that's why when I knew I was going to do a Black History Extravaganza, you asked me this from last week. There was only one person in my phone book. Only one person in my phone book. And I got on to the sister straight away. And without a shadow of a doubt, the sister has dropped some signs. Sister Charmaine, Wagwan, Rasta, Wagwan. <laughs> Greetings, brother. How you doing? You okay? Midea, midea, and midede. So it's all good. Excellent, what's excellent. Cooking? What's cooking, sister? What's cooking? Oh, plenty, plenty cooking at the moment. Oh my gosh, there is so much things going on at the moment. Just busy. <laughs> now, <laughs> I literally I, I came back good. from a convent. He's good. He's well. You know, he's here. He's here listening on Salute another device. Salute Mark Frost, King. Salute <laughs> King Frost, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here. And the, and the here children. And oh, the yeah, children. they're good. Yeah, they're good. They're next door getting ready for their bed. And they're soon coming to make up noise. <laughs> but yeah, they're good. And welcome, everybody, on the platform as well. It's good to see the numbers, as always, as well. So for those who know who I am, you know that I love... Andrew Muhammad. I always say to hear to people that you're my second husband, and people look at me like, eh? But no, I, I love you like plant, planting and saltfish fritters. Yeah. <laughs> and if you know me, those are my favorite fruits. So yeah. And I'm always willing to come in and support as well. And Westside Young Leaders Academy, you know, there's a special place in my heart for them. And I'm always bigging you up. Every presentation I can, I'm mentioning either your name or Julian Hall or whoever, because I believe that we must support each other as well. I didn't get the brother's name who was speaking before, but I love what he was saying and it kind of Jeff linked, Jeff into, Jeff yes, kind of linked into what I was saying, because you know that I'm an economist and I Jeff love Jeff. economics as well. So it kind of linked into what uh, we were saying as well. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to get going as well. Because, Sister, I'm going to shut my mouth. It's all to you yeah. now, my queen. No. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So what I'll do is I'll just share my details in the group as well, and I'll share my presentation. So this presentation I had to redo because my computer decided it was going to do uh, for a wobbly. But what I wanted to do today was talk about how we can use Black history to inspire our Black future. Because oftentimes we always people talking, hear people talking about we must teach black history, we must learn black history. But what are we actually doing with the information? Now, I tend to find that some, some people just go to presentations, get the knowledge, and that's it. But what are you using that information for? Now, I'm a type of person, I, like, I love reading and love learning and love taking the information. But I also think, how can I use this information to further my life? And it's very important that we do that, especially when we're consuming Black history and Black studies as well. And you have been literally sport by Andrew Mohammed and this platform because you have some amazing speakers and amazing content every week and also for free. So I tell people that we must come and support um, Brother Andrew, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So I'm just going to give a little general introduction to myself. So this is me and my husband, Mr. Mark Simpson, and we are a, a power team and we've been working together and running Black History Studies for 15 years now, long before Black History was exciting and Black History was, it was sexy. Um, we have been teaching Black History and Black Studies under the banner of um, Black History Studies um, long before it got interesting in 2020, because that's when a lot of people started to focus on Black History. But we have been around for a number of years teaching this as well. And I've been teaching Black History even longer, but under a different organization. So we set up Black History Studies 15 years ago because we were fed up of the conversations that we would hear. People complaining about, oh, why don't we, why is the school system teaching Black history? Why can't, ain't somebody else teaching Black history? And I thought, you know what, let's take it upon ourselves and take our responsibility, um, take responsibility for teaching our own history by ourselves, by any means necessary. So when we set up Black History Studies, we wanted to go down the route where we can be free to speak, not being um, 
silenced or sanctioned by anybody else because they gave us money. So we basically self-funded our organization, or I should say Mark Simpson self-funded the organization through his tribunal case that he won. And we put all the money into Black History Studies and we have not, and we've looked forward and we have just been excelling all over the world now, teaching history, not just in the UK, but globally as well. So we, um, I've just finished a long-term contract teaching young people in American schools in Washington, DC, teaching them black history on a, um, a between 12 and three o'clock in the morning. So we have been teaching black history globally now. And our mission is to teach and inform and inspire and empower people through black history and black studies by educating the community to educate themselves, okay? And we do this, Via different, a variety of different ways. So what we want to do is inspire you to take to go on and learn some more because we don't turn around and say that we're experts because no one could be an expert in black history because we're constantly finding information and uncovering history every day. We are making history as we speak. Being on this platform with 281 people at, on a Tuesday evening, we are making history as we speak and we have to appreciate that as well, okay? So every day we're making history, but it's how we are recording this history. And we're going to talk about that later. So how do we at Black History Studies do the work that we do? So we um, teach Black history via different ways. We do um, presentations, now webinars. We do courses. Uh, we do uh, beginners and advanced Black Studies course, which is one of our most famous courses. We put that online and we've been teaching up to 50 people at a time, teaching that course globally to people from all over the world, which is just amazing. Uh, we also do international study tours to different places around the world. Um, we, for the past 11 years, we've been taking groups to Egypt on our Best of Egypt tour. And we have about 45 people going in October and we're going to be going on the tour again in May. We also do um, short trips to Amsterdam, Paris, Spain, Lisbon and various different places. We also do corporate consultations where we go in and teach corporate organization, Black History and Black Studies to their, um, their staff, which has been amazing. We also run film screenings for our community cinema program. And we've been doing that for a number of years. And we work with some amazing partners like Lexi Cinema, Ritzy Cinema, um, Picture House Cinema, um, teach and just sharing um, black history through film. We also do our museum tours. So we have our black history tour of the British Museum. We've got the Louvre Museum. We also got the, we do walks up to uh, Liverpool. And we do a museum tour on our Liverpool Ma'arfa tour and Black History Tour of Liverpool. And we've taken a group up there in on Saturday as well. And similar to um, Brother Chef, I will call him Brother Chef earlier, was speaking about supporting Black businesses and entrepreneurship. We've been doing that for a number of years, long before the Black Pound Day was ever thought about. We've been teaching, uh, we've been supporting Black businesses and entrepreneurship for our Black Market and Film Festival event that we ran. Uh, we're going to be bringing that back. So no people have been asking how come it stopped for a while. We are going to be bringing it back. And we have been self-publishing books and resources, making films and much, much more. So we have been educating people for the past 15 years in black history. And the reason why I talk about that is because when you stand and share your story in an empowering way, your story will heal you and your story will heal somebody else. And we have a lot of healing to do. Yeah, brother Andrew was talking about, about washouts and, and, and detoxing. There's a lot of things that we have to detox from our system. Some of the, um, some of the negative limiting mindsets and um, legacies of enslavement that we have we have consumed in our body and held into our body we need to be looking at how we heal from that generational trauma that we has that has been imposed on us okay and this is one of the reasons why i love teaching history i love sharing our story by any means necessary because it, it will heal you and i know how the long teaching of black history has healed me and transformed my life so i want to share that love with other people as well so Cultural identity. Now, I believe that black history also is very important to people, but our cultural identity is very important as well. Yeah. And it's important to your well being because identifying with a particular culture helps people feel they belong and give them a sense of security. Yeah. It feels good knowing that I'm from the African community, from the black community, from the Caribbean community. It feels good knowing that. Um, my history is, has a long legacy and knowing that people who look like me have shared interests with me, yeah? So black, teaching of black history also helps your cultural identity. 
And an established cultural identity has been linked with positive outcomes in areas such as health, education, access to social networks, which provides support and shared values and inspirations. Now, people often ask, ask us through the years, why do we used to do so much events? Because people would come up to us and say things like, Charmaine, the reason why I love your events is because I can feel like me. I don't have to put on this veil and hide my true being. I can come and laugh and nobody's telling me to be quiet. I can just be myself. I can come and eat a patty and some of Mark's soup and learn and interact with people. If you come to our events, we have something called a no screw face policy. So you will turn to somebody and say hello to them and greet them and say hello. And that has worked over the years because people have got, gone on to create friendship groups. People have gone on to set up businesses. Um, people have gone on to do future events. We've had actually, we've had four babies. And at least two uh, weddings and marriages and relationships that, have, that I know of that have come through work that we've done at Black Issue Study. So we're bringing a community together by any means necessary as well. And it's also about supporting others that look like you. And I, I'm, as Andrew knows, he can follow me anytime and ask me to come and do something for him and I'll come and do it because I absolutely love the work that he's doing. And I believe that it's all about sharing and supporting each other. I love supporting the work of Tony Warner. I love supporting the work of Andrew Mohammed, Professor Les Henry, all of the greats out there that are doing the work because many, all of us doing the work will be amazing. More people learn, more people be educated. That is a goal for me. Yeah, it's not about ego and, oh, I want to keep these people. No, it's not about ego. It's all about looking at the bigger picture. And that's what I'm about, looking at the bigger picture. Okay. So a person's understanding of their own and others' cultural identity develops from birth and is shaped by the values and attitudes prevalent at home and in the surrounding community. So that's why I was laughing when um, Andrew put up the, 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 the poll about the washouts and things that we used to do back in the day. We need to go back to some of those, those traditions because we kind of get caught up in the, in the system and caught up in the mod modernity we're not, we need to go back to some of the things that worked for us in the past, yeah? And learn from those things, okay? Things like uh, what we, like washouts and making sure that we're looking after our bodies, yeah? Family reunions, going to other people's houses. We're missing those things. A lot of people have been damaged from this lockdown, being isolated from their families. And this is why you see the rise in mental health issues. We need to start going back and becoming together as one because we need each other, yeah? We are people, people. Yeah, we thrive on relationships. Yeah, so this is why lockdown was very um, difficult for some people because they never got to see people. Okay, so we need to go back to that. And I actually co posted this week about the smile and nod. If you see your brother and sister, smile and nod, even say good morning or just acknowledge them. That goes a long way. Yeah, we need to go back to that because oftentimes you hear people talking about all oh, the young people this and the young people that. No, the young people are learning from us. If they see us hostile to other, other peers, what do you think they're going to be doing? Yeah? So we need to start checking ourselves before we start pointing the finger at our young people. Yeah? We need to start doing those things for ourselves. Okay? So the importance of knowing your history is very important. So Dr. Milana Krenger, who is an African-American scholar, he, said, he defined history as a collective record of a people shaping a world around them in their interests and images. So there's a need to study our history to de develop self-knowledge and identity through history. And when I talk about studying our history, our history did not start with slavery. I know some people in this country only wanna focus on enslavement, but our history did not start off with slavery, okay? So our history and what, what we do at Black History Studies, our curriculum starts with the origin of humanity, which I'm going to be speaking about in a moment. That's where our history starts, at the origin of humanity, not slavery. Okay, and we must value our contribution to world history. And I often say that black history or African history is the missing pages or the hidden pages of world history. Okay, and there are people out there that want to suppress our history and don't want to share the history. But the fact that we have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and, um, ways of educating our people without the constraints of other people's um, limited beliefs, we can do that. Yeah, no excuses none at all so by allowing black people to understand that their culture is something to be valued or worth celebrating is vital to their self or racial esteem and sense of identity yeah 
And it's not just about your raising your self-esteem, it's all about your racial esteem as well. Because oftentimes we just focus on the negative, we need to focus on the positive aspects of our community. And there are plenty positive things happening in our community, yeah? But when we speak about the future, these are the parts that we'll be talking about, okay? So why is it important? To illustrate the richness of our history as a result of contribution from different cultures and communities of people. To challenge ignorance and stereotypical views of the wider community regarding the histories of black people, uh, black communities um, worldwide. Um, and also as citizens of the 21st century, we all have the right to be enlightened about the world in which we live in and be taught in a balanced view of history. OK, we are doing some work with um, a private school at the moment who want to decolonize their their curriculum. Now, you could decolonize it or globalize it, but they but I can't not the teachers. I can't not and I can't blame the school system, because if you're not taught um, history in a way that is inclusive, how can you then go and teach that history to somebody else, particularly your young people? OK, so this is why um, we go into do consultation, going to schools or even bypass the school system. And I teach young people on a Sunday doing children's workshops. OK, um, teaching the history. So I'm talking about people that you probably they would never hear about. People like Dyke and Dryden, Magdalena Walker, people such as um, uh, ooh, so much people like like Marie Van Britten Brown. Some of these people, the most people I ain't even heard of before, but these are people that have contributed to world history and we benefit from their, their inventions and their contributions to this day, okay? So what I wanted to do is do a little um, snippet of some of the black sheroes in the Hall of Fame. Because as being a historian and being a woman, um, I tend to find that black history is very male dominated. And if I speak to people and ask them to name 20 black female, or African female um, icons in history, some people will struggle. So I, as a woman, I like to highlight the woman contribution to history. So I wanted to do the Black Sheroes in the Hall of Fame, okay? So let me go through a few people that I selected because I've got 45 minutes and I only selected a few. We could be here all night as Andrew knows, um, but let me highlight some of the hero, he sheroes in the Hall of Fame, okay? So the first person I wanted to speak about is our oldest human ancestor, okay? Who is 3.5 million years old, okay? So on the 24th of November, 1974, a nearly complete skeleton of our oldest human ancestor was found in Hadar in Ethiopia, okay? And Professor Donald Johansson of the US Institute of Human Origin suggested the name Lucy, okay? So having been discovered, in Ethiopia, she was given the African name Ninkanesh, which means thou art wonderful. So this is the oldest human ancestor found in where? Africa, yeah? The continent that is now called Africa and the area that is known as Ethiopia, okay? So you know European people want to give them a European name to try and speak that, oh, yep, yeah, that the origin of humanity starts in Europe. No, the origin of humanity starts in Africa and they gave the name thou art wonderful. And this is her remains. And this can, you can actually go to the uh, museums in Ethiopia and see her remains. And these are the oldest human remains. So our history starts off at the origin of humanity. And we talk about this in our Introduction to Black Studies course, which we'll be running again in, July, in January of 2023. All our information is on our website and I'll talk about that at the end. So I wanted to talk about some of the queens and of of black history or African history. And one of them is Queen Hatshepsut, okay? Uh, Queen Hatshepsut was the first female pharaoh of ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet as we should call it. So Hatshepsut, she was a woman, but she ruled as a man and she ruled, and she ruled as a man. She took on a male identity, okay? So she wore the Nemes cloth. She often took the male identity. So when you're looking at her monuments in Egypt or Kemet, you will see them depicting a very masculine figure. And she is known as the longest reigning female pharaoh in Kemet, ruling for more than 20 years. And she built a number of monuments uh, throughout Egypt and Nubia. And she built two obelisks in, um, and the Dal El Bari temple. Now, if you haven't been to that temple, we actually take groups there to that temple. And that temple is amazing. You see um, the, the deity of uh, Hathor or Heheru there uh, in this um, temple. Just amazing to go. People need to go there and see it for themselves. You also got military women, okay, who resisted 
um, our enslavement. So when we think about African history, we don't often think of military history. And you've got women such as Queen Nzinga, and she was very famous because she led um, the resistance against enslavement in Africa, against the Portuguese, okay, who were encroaching in Angola. And she's a, got a very amazing history to learn about. We actually written, we actually published a children book based on her life story. Um, we have, we published and released this year. If you go on our website, you'll see all the information there as well. But what we want to do is inspire our young people in particular about these amazing stories in our history. Yeah, because even though she was a woman that had to fight back then, we are still fighting a great fight right now. Yeah, the, the fight against our, our mental enslavement hasn't stopped. The physical, the physical enslavement has, stopped, st has ended, allegedly, okay, but the mental enslavement continues. And then you've got and the great Yah Asantua, okay? And that picture is not even actually of her, but that is an image that is used to describe uh, that to show her. Okay. She was famous for leading the Ashanti rebellion against the British colonialism with an army of 5,000 then. And the British demanded the golden stool of the Ashanti, which is the symbol of the Ashanti nation. And she was able to keep and hide this uh, um, symbol of, of the Ashanti nation. And to this day, it's still in the Ashanti kingdom. Okay. And this was one of, and she is known to have led the last major war led by an African woman. And that is Yaa Asantawa. Okay. Another freedom fighter, let's go to Haiti and look at the Haitian revolution. And we can't be talking about black history and not mention the Haitian revolution and its important contributions to world history. Not just black history, world history, okay? And you have Empress Marie Claire Harry's Felicity Bonheur de Salines, who was a great queen of one of the most famous um, freedom fighters against the enslavement of our African um, brothers and sisters, who she was the first lady of Haiti, was the wife of, of Dessalines, and was the first African empress to rule the country in the Western Hemisphere. And we know that she marched the front line along her, with her husband during the War of Independence in 1804. You know that she was famous for um, creating the soup as well, that they, set, um, in, that they cook in January. And she's just an amazing person to learn about, okay? And her contributions to and the Haitian Revolution. There's another sister that you should learn about, Sene Belé, yeah? All of these amazing women that contributed to our black history, but oftentimes we don't hear about their contributions. Why? Okay. And then you also got the great mama, Moses, Harriet Tubman, yeah? Who was one of the most famous conductors of the Underground Railroad, which is a series of safe houses that were able to liberate over 300 Africans to the North and they were allegedly free. Okay, and she made 19 trips into the South and escorted 300 enslaved Africans to freedom. And she wasn't just a conductor of the Underground Railroad; world. She was a spy, a soldier, a nurse, and a just an amazing woman to learn about. And that is Harriet Tubman. And then you also have um, other queens that we should learn about, su such as Empress Menon, who was the wife of Haile Selassie, who was married for, for a number of years to him. And she was crowned alongside Emperor ha Haile Selassie in November of 1930. And she was a very instrumental in promoting women issues and women's rights in Ethiopia. And she founded the Empress Men in School for Girls during her time in Ethiopia. Okay. And you also got other queens. Okay. So you've got Amy Jates Garvey. You've got, you have Amy Ashford Garvey that also contributed to a lot of history in the UK. But you also got Amy Jates Garvey. Now, if it wasn't for Amy Jates Garvey, we wouldn't have the knowledge and the books and the resources that we have of Marcus Garvey today because she was his publicist. And she was the second wife of Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And for those who don't know, Marcus Mosiah Garvey was um, a leader of the, one of the largest um, black nationalist movements ever. Um, and he also created the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And Amy Jates Garvey was a secretary general of the UNIA. And she became the first lady of the Interim Provisional Government of Africa and the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, and African Community Leagues, ACL, in August of 1920, okay? And she was one of the editors of the Negro World newspaper. Now, this newspaper was so important and, and so liberating to the people who read it that certain colonial countries banned the newspaper. If you was found in certain countries with that newspaper, you could actually be killed. 
And this is the power of media. And when I talk about media um, in a moment and looking at future, we need to be thinking about how did Marcus Garvey do this and able to create an organization with over 30 million people from all around the world in the 1920s before internet, Facebook, Twitter, all of these things. He was able to liberate people and get, get, galvanize people globally all around the world under his organization. We have no excuses now, yeah? Because we have all of these technologies now, we can galvanize people all around the world, okay? Then you also got Coretta Scott King, the wife of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And she continued to work after he was assassinated. And she founded the Martin Luther King G a Center for Nonviolent Social Change, which was a living memorial to her husband's death. And she created, which, and I, believe, and I believe it's so important that we need to start doing these things, archiving our documents, yeah? This is what we need to do. We're making history every day, but how, what, how are we recording these documents? How are we recording our story? How are we preserving this information for the future generation? We need to be actively thinking about how do we, to, what, how, what do we put down for our young people? When we're dead and gone, how do they research this period of time in history? Okay, and this is why I love talking about Coretta Scott King because she created a, one of the largest archives or documents of the civil rights movement. So we can now tell our, our stories from our perspective, okay? And then can't not talk about black history and not mention Jessica Huntley. Now she is one of the people that I stand on the shoulders on because Jessica Huntley and her husband, Eric, uh, Aaron, um, Eric um, Huntley were also instrumental in highlighting and educating people in this country, okay? So they founded the groundbreaking publishing house, Bogler Overture Limited and published one of the most famous books, Walter Rodney's book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Yeah, that book has been a game changer. And European people are still vexed about that book. Walter Rodney, How Europe Developed and Developed Africa. Okay. And they highlighted and, and, and publicized Walter Rodney. Okay. And they were pioneers of the Black Supplementary School movement of the 1960s and 1970s. They also organized legal defense of Black and Asian people at race to during the South War riots as well of 1979. And they were very instrumental in the organizing of the New Cross Massacre Action Committee, who organized one of the most famous marches in Black British history, the 1981 Black People's Day of Action March, which, was, which came as a result of the New Cross Fire Massacre that happened in January of 1981, okay? And then you also got other activists that we should learn about. Some of the women such as Nelson, like, such as Winnie Mandela. Often people talk about Nelson Mandela, but they don't give Winnie Mandela her dues. Now, if it wasn't for Winnie Mandela, um, the, the, the anti-apartheid movement wouldn't have been so powerful because she kept, she kept the fight going. She kept the fight going for freedom. And she is known as South Africa's first black professional social worker, and during the 1976 youth uprising, she established the Black Women's Federation and Black Parents Association. So yet again, creating organizations to, to support the work, yeah? And while she was banished because she was constantly under threat and they constantly um, uh, kept her under lock and key because of um, her work, and she opened up a crash in a clinic with Dr. Abu Baker Asvat, okay? And here is a famous picture of them too, and I love the picture of them too. Unfortunately, they separated because I believe that Nelson Mandela would never have been president of South Africa if, if they were still married together. They couldn't have that strong black woman beside him, okay? And then you also talk about other women's contribution, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Now, a lot of people don't know the Black Panther Party was global. It wasn't just in America, it was in Britain as well. You also had, you had Black Panther Party in, Amer in, in Australia. You also had Black Panther Party in Israel. And you also had the Black Panther Party in India, the Dalit Party as well. And the Black Panther Party, a military and revolutionary group, fought for the empowerment of the Black community. And there's so much lessons we can learn from the Black Panther Party. And we know that in 1970, approximately 40 to 70% of party members were women. And several chapters were headed by women. Okay, so these are often times when we look at the Black Panther Party, it's seen very male orientated, but women were also had leading roles and leadership roles in that organization. And I can't talk about activists and not mention these amazing sisters in the community. You also got here, oh, let me move that out of the way. You've got Janet Older, 
Marcia Rigg and Temi Moale. So uh, Janet Older and Marcia Rigg, they became activists because due to their brothers being killed in police brutality. And then you also got Temi Moale with the Forefront Project doing amazing work in the community, seeking justice for young people and working with young people against police brutality. And then you also have these amazing sisters as well, who I have the pleasure of working with them as well. Sister Esther Stanford-Zosi and Sister Jendai um, Serwa, amazing sisters doing some amazing work in the community as well. Um, and I have to always pick them up for their work as well, because oftentimes they don't get their flowers. And then you also look at entrepreneurship and looking at women in business, okay? So you have, most people talk about uh, Madam C.J. Walker as one of the first African-American multimillionaires, but she was not the first. That distinction goes to her boss, Annie Malone, yeah? And Annie Malone built a very successful business creating hair care products for African-American women beginning in 1889. And Madam C.J. Walker was one of Annie Malone's employees. And what Annie Malone did with her organization, she created Poor Old College, which she was training um, beauticians and barbers as well as secretaries and bookkeepers to work on the marketing side of her business. So her model was some of the mid models that we see today in terms of network marketing, um, different people going out and selling her products as well. And she was so prosperous that she had $40 million in assets in 1920. Yeah. And she was known as one of the wealthiest women, African-American women in the world. So we have a long history of entrepreneurship and business history that oftentimes it, it, it gets forgotten about. OK, and I love talking about this as an economist and a businesswoman myself. I love learning about people that inspire me in my journey. And then this amazing lady who I wrote a children's workshop about, Maggie Lena Walker. Now, she was an African-American businesswoman, educator and civil rights activist and was the first African-American woman or any woman from any race to charter a bank and serve as its president in the United States. So she was actually running a bank. In America and the first black, the first woman to do that. And she and her work and, and her work of her team running the bank changed African-American people's lives, got people to think about saving their money, investing their money. And it's very important that we start doing that as well. So when Andrew asked me to do this presentation, I thought about black history, but then I thought about black future. And I often ask the question, what is the future of black history? Okay, what is the future of black history? Okay, so like I said, I believe in learning our history to honor the past and inspire the future, but what is our future looking like? Yeah, what is the plan for our future? What is the black agenda or the African agenda for the black community in particular in the UK? Okay, so I often, I like, I like this man. Anybody know who he is? His name is Dr. Claude Anderson and he, in his writing, in his book called Powernomics, he talks about various different levels that we need to be thinking on, okay? Now, I'm gonna quickly go through the different levels and talk about what I believe we need to be think thinking about. So Brother Chef earlier was talking about economics, and I believe that we need to start thinking about economics. Hence the reason why I became a financial educator. So one of my businesses that I run, I actually um, run a financial education company where I teach families how to become financially free and actually to sort out your finances. And I've been doing this for a long time and I do free presentations in the community all the time, teaching people about economics and financial education because this is an area that we need to focus on. Um, Brother Andrew was asking for donations earlier, yeah? We should be donating, having a direct debit from your account, even if it's five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, each month to go and support the work that he does because he is giving his time freely to educate us. And we need to start thinking about our economic foundation in this country. Now, I was recently in Jamaica and I'm seeing economic um, growth happening and I'm seeing development happening in Jamaica. But the thing is, if we're not in a position to actually jump on these opportunities, then we're going to be complaining that all oh, the Chinese and everybody else is jumping on these things. But we need to put ourselves in a position that when there's opportunities for us to thrive, we are in a position to, to take advantage of these things. Yeah. If you're not think if you have if you're thinking not got your emergency savings fund in place, you're not got your multiple streams of income in place, you need to start thinking about these things because the government's already telling us in October that the prices are going up. We're seeing prices going up. The wages are staying the same. We need to start thinking about our economic foundation in this country. 
yeah we need to start building our businesses and supporting our businesses in our com in our in our community so that's economic so things about what can we think about political yeah what are the political areas that we need to be thinking about um in the community right now okay so we had politician and people political um political people of the past in our history but what people what are we thinking about our political future how are we are we going to influence the political movement of this country somebody mentioned earlier lee jasper follow him because he knows all about the political system in this country we we, have, we should be able to create organizations to challenge and 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 challenge these the government lobbying groups we had the west west um west um West African Student Union in this country that lobbied for the liberation of African countries uh, against colonialism. Where, where is our political lobbying groups or from the black community? We need to start thinking about these things. How can we benefit from the recent um, census that's gonna be delivered recently? Yeah, We need to be thinking about how do we get ourselves strong politically? And then also that will feed into justice. Okay, I don't need to talk about um, child Q and the many injustices that we've seen against our children in this country and our adults as well. We need to be thinking about how do we counteract that? What do we need to do uh, to, to fight this in violent and nonviolent ways? Yeah, um, we need to be thinking about how we fight against the system and support ourselves. And then it leads on to media as well. Earlier, I spoke about making sure that we record our history and document our story. How do we share our story? What media platforms are we creating? Yeah. What digital media are we creating? Yeah. Uh, how we meet, how are we reaching out to a global, a person, global community? Do we create our own news stations um, to tell our own stories from our views? What do, else do we do? How do we share our stories? Uh, how do we counter the mainstream media and their portrayal of our story and our journey in this country? What can we do? Yeah. What things are we creating? If this is an area that's that you love doing, join with somebody that's doing it. Okay. And then also education. And this is why I always love supporting Westside Young Leaders Academy because I wish that was around when I was younger. Yeah. So supporting educational establishments to do the work that, that you found beneficial. So supporting Westside Young Leaders Academy, supporting Black Issue Studies to get the information out there, creating um, centers of excellence and innovation centers. So every black household have somewhere to send their children. Okay, creating online courses, um, films, media, books, um, all of these things that we need to do to e up educate and uplift our community. We need to start thinking about and having an active plan of how we do that. And we can't just do it because it's reactionary, because I noticed a lot of people only started to talk about black history after Black Lives Matter and George Floyd got killed. No one was talking about black history before then, and all of a sudden it got sexy in the news. No, we need to keep it consistent and continue, continue to share this information, not as a result of something negative happening in the world. We need to be thinking about how do we proactively educate our people? Yeah. Um, Andrew saying that Professor Gosh John is coming onto the platform. The amount of knowledge that man has in his head, we need to be taking that knowledge out and using that those culture, those community resources for our future. Yeah and creating things because Castro may be thinking, you know, I've got the energy to do it right now, getting the young blood in to come in and continue the work and stand on the shoulders of him and continue the legacy as well. And this is some of the things that we should be doing. Thinking about our future is very important that we start doing that by any means necessary, okay? And we can do that, we just have to do it. So I believe that it's very important that we need to highlight the contributions made by people of African and Caribbean descent so they're not forgotten and their stories pass on to future generation. But as we learn the history, we need to learn the history to inspire our future and have a future plan of what we want to do. Yeah, whether it's a five year plan, a 10 year plan, and that could be, could, be a, could be community level or it could be individual in your home. What is your plan for the next one year, two years, five years, 10 years? We need to be thinking about our future and what our future will look like, whether it's in this country or abroad, we need to start actively, proactively thinking about these things, okay? So make black history every day. Be proud of our culture and history every day of the year. Remember that you are too making history today. And that is the end of my presentation. Wow, wow, wow. Brothers and sisters, come on, man. I said to you, I did say to you, black history extravaganza. Tonight, sister, you didn't even take one deep breath in. 
You just won Excel, my sister. And you just ran. Oh, come on, man. Sister, I'm hoping you're looking at the platform, the chat line. Brothers and sisters, to show your love, just put something on the platform. If you didn't feel it, then don't say it. But I want the sisters to see how many people she touched wow. tonight. That was not just history. That was teaching. That was preaching. That was uh, inspiring. That was cuddling. That was showing love to. Oh, my God. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. That's what I'm saying, brothers. It's hidden if we don't play. Oh, see, once you know you've been on this platform, you know you're the best in the UK and around the world. We yeah. don't play, man. We ain't got time to play with anyone. No. Time is now. We ain't got time to play. Mm -mm. No time to play. I say to people, people say to me, show me, oh, what keeps you going? Oh, what keeps you motivated? I've got three little faces that are looking at me every morning. So that's what keeps me motivated. I get motivated from the love and support I get from the community. The people that come to our events and say, oh my gosh, I didn't learn that. I didn't know this. And this is what we need to do. And just love oh. what you do and just keep going. If people don't like you, that's your business. That's their business. That's your business. And keep going. Business. Yeah. That's I keep your going. Business. And, and like I say to people, if you don't like how we do it, you do it then. Do it yourself. Yeah. Or if you don't do like yourself. how we do it, support somebody else that's doing it. But as long as we're doing it and keep it moving and keep the action going, that's what we have to keep doing. We ain't got time oh. for ego. We ain't got time for pasta pasta. I ain't got time for the nonsense. It's all about love. That's what I deal with. I deal with love. I ain't got time. Come on. Yeah. That's Come exactly. On, Drink your water and mind your black business. That's exactly what I do every day. Yeah. Woo. I don't want to hear about Love Island. I hear about no other foolishness. I ain't got time for that. I'm, I'm focused on what I need to do because I've got, I see the bigger picture. I've got goals and dreams in mind. I want to know if when my eyes close that my children ain't struggling and going through the same things that I was going through when I was coming up in this country, this society. Yeah. We ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for that. We should be make, leaving, we should be making um, our lives, uh, our children's life much better than, than wow. our, our, what we went through. Yeah. Our wow. children shouldn't have to be struggling. I shouldn't have children have to wait until they're like 12, 13, 14 to know about their history. We ain't got time for that. I want wow. our children to know from when from in nursery. Speak to them while they're in the womb, while you're rubbing your belly wow. and putting that, that cocoa butter and that shea butter and your, and your stretch marks on your belly. We should be talking truth and power into our children. So when they grow wow. up and, 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 and grow up into the community, they see amazing people like you, Andrew. They see amazing people like you, Professor Les Henry. You see uh, people like myself and my husband and, and wow. Tony Warner and all the amazing people out there, all the amazing people in the, in the chat box as well, 328 of them, all of the 1029 now, all of those people now, those are the wow. people that are amazing and doing the works that we need to be doing. We've got, we got, ain't got time, wow. for, we've got time to play because we don't know when our eyes are going to close. Yeah, we don't know when it's wow. our time. And there's many a people that, that I would love to be in a position that I'm in now, but they died. Yeah, they, uh -huh. they never woke up that morning. Never woke so what, up. So they never woke up that morning. So why am I why am I disrespecting time? I respect time and I respect my life and I love my life. Yeah, and we, we got to start you. work. We need the urgency. I was at a webinar and they said we need to have the urgency. At like our life is like this. We need to be have urgency. Like we ain't got time. It needs to be done like yesterday. Come on. Because oftentimes we get too comfortable. We're waiting on. on somebody else to do it. And when somebody asks to do it, we've always got some criticism. No, we ain't got time for that. We've got to do it. Time is urgent. Yeah. I don't want to hear another story about child Q. Because I know if that was my child and that child is my child, when I heard about that, don't, I was don't even, don't even go I just there. had don't to walk go. away from social media for a bit because the way I was cussing, I said, you know, I can't. Don't, yeah, don't even take your mind there, sister. Yeah, don't take your mind that's what I'm saying. And if they could take them liberties with our children, your dead right. bodies. We're gonna go there, sis. We're gonna go yeah, there. We need to we need to start have We're that urgency and to get things done. Because the time is Come now. On. Our children need our, their children need us. Our elders need us as well. Come Don't on. just focus on the young people. What about our elders? Our elders need us. There's elders that are sitting down in their house, lonely, yeah, giving up on life because nobody don't want to come and look for them, yeah, struggling gonna, because their gonna... pension can't 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 cover their bills. We we ain't got time, man. We've got to look we after our time. people. We've Sister, got to do all the work. I know. Excellent. I know that on this on this platform. Um, it, sister, uh, you know, Allah's teaching me patience right now, sister, in my life, because we're, no, on a real talk, sister, because where my vision is taking this platform, sister, mm -hmm. see, some people think I'm just doing this talk, you know, like a local ego, look, a local Tuesday show, we can run to no. joke and, you know, talk about black history and feel good for a little while. Sister, that is so far 
No, that's what I'm saying. The hidden truth. That is so far from the vision of Black History Studies. Once, you know, we've got ideas, we've got plans, we've got visions, and Allah is just teaching me patience right now, blood, because, mm -hmm. you know, we're retaking it, sister. Oh, my God, I can't wait. And, and all you know we're there. <laughs> and all, and all, all we're waiting for, sister, not even waiting, what we're building at this present time, sister, mm -hmm. is a platform of enough people who are not going to be so digi, not mm. going to be too, so scared to death. Uh, people no. are not going to be so distracted. So a little bit of rain comes out. Oh, Black History doesn't care no more. A bit, a bit of steam. Or it's too hot outside. So you know yep. what? I'm going to go outside and get some. Oh, forget about Black History. Forget about Black History. Mm. Forget, you know what I mean? Yep. Oh, oh, I haven't got no money. Therefore, Black History and Black Liberation doesn't care. You know, anything, any wind of adversity that comes across, yep. the first thing to be um i'm sacrificed is the love of self our oh yeah history, big time our economical program our ideas our, our, our unity and that's why it's so hard for people like myself and yourself and various others because you know we're dealing with people that are so how can i say so sensitive mm -hmm. that literally anything happens can easily distract them from the bigger goal but what, oh, yeah. I'm, loving, what i'm loving right now on this hidden truth platform what i'm loving now with the um the black history studies platform what i'm loving about robin walker's platform what i'm mm -hmm. loving loving about hidden science platform mm -hmm. what i'm yep. loving about hidden um sorry the black history walks platform and these are the main platforms i look at and various other platforms now yeah. numbers of us are saying you know what we're not going to be distracted anymore mm -mm. you know what i mean we don't care about rain we don't care about sleet we don't care about 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 tube strike we don't get our liberation comes first and foremost yep. sister charmaine yep. we thank you again <laughs> thank you, know, you brothers and sisters that is one of our legendary warriors legendary warriors man and that's why when i look at sister charmaine man come on <laughs> brothers and sisters once again show some love as we move thank you. on the program charmaine lick shot from babylon right thank you me. Buffalo soldier and a big dreadlock ruster for you there. <laughs> Thank Every you. Single time. Thank you, my and, queen. And I so can't stay long because I've actually got to go and do a financial education appointment at eight. Exactly. And I'm late, so the work no don't way. stop for me. The work don't you stop for going. me. Yeah. You keep going. Brothers and sisters, that is the great Charmaine dealing with part one of our Black History Extravaganza.